Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Hmm, that's good today. Today's mug is the uh, kitty with the uh, scarf and stocking hat in a garden, inexplicably of pansies and other spring flowers. Um, there's also poppies and daffodils. I don't know. It's a cold spring where this kitty is. Anyway, uh, today is Say It With Me Friday, woo, uh, December 9th. 2022 uh quickly waning 2022 waning with the once full moon which is now sliding down again heading towards solstice so uh yeah it's um been both a fast and a slow week uh, if you've been listening all week been dealing with the burn of re-entry from paradise uh, and struggling with this book, fighting with this book. So I did go to writer coffee yesterday and had a funny conversation with Jim Sorensen, which ended up with me pretty much hysterically laughing. So I asked for his advice on this, on bandits. And I, I asked him one thing and he, you know, we had a long conversation about it and it was kind of dovetailed with the advice that Alex gave me last week on the beach in Kauai. Uh, not that I'm bitter. <laughs> uh, anytime you can get writing advice on the beach. So I'd say go for that. Um, but at any rate, yeah, so Jim and I talked about that and got it sorted. And then I said, well, and I've got one other question for you. And I said, this might be, because he offered to read the beginning for me. And I said, I'm going to take him up on that. And, oh, you know, and I'll tell you all kind of a funny thing. Um, one of the things I really like about Jim is he is a cishet white guy who is very, very aware of the fact that he is right at the center of privilege. And he is married to a Chinese American woman who is a kick-ass trauma surgeon but often deals with stuff like, um, you know, that comes her way as a woman of color and a minority and also as a woman in a surgical department. Uh, and Jim often reflects back to me things that I am not aware of, uh, which I find very useful. But we were, he offered to read the beginning of the book for me and said that he thought, because I was talking about, as I mentioned yesterday, that it was basically like one big action fight scene. And thank you to all of you who commiserated with me on that, because what the hell am I thinking? <laughs> so Jim said, you know, they felt like he could be a useful reader to me on that. And he said, not that he minds reading, like the feelings and kissy stuff, but that he thinks that I probably have other people who are... Um, more useful to me um, on that stuff. And I said, yes. Uh, and besides, I feel like I've got that part pretty well handled. And, and then I added not, not to sound vain or anything. And he said, see, if you were a man, I don't think you would have qualified that with that final phrase. And I was like, oh, you could be right. So it's always interesting to have that kind of reflection. Uh, but but it is a female thing to do, isn't it, right? To, if I very confidently say, well, I think I have this aspect of my writing handled, um, to not be able to leave it there, right? That I've got to say, but I don't want to sound vain or arrogant. Tee hee hee. So anyway, I said, I said, this may not be a question you can answer until you've read the book, uh, but I'm just trying to decide on the opening. So I was describing the opening and I said, you know, this is, you know, that opens with, I'm trying to think of how I can file off the serial numbers here. Oh, I'm just going to tell you, and hopefully this isn't spoilery. Um, I said, 
that it starts out with this character who is basically working in races and tournaments. And I wasn't sure if I, you know, if it begins with um, having won this race and, you know, being the champion yet again, and then someone comes and gives her gossip that like kicks off the stakes of the story. And Jim's like, oh yeah, that sounds great. And I said, so I'm trying to decide, should I leave it where I'm, should I leave it there uh, with the person coming to give her gossip, having won the race, um, or should I open with the race? And he gives me this kind of dumbfounded look and he's like, you mean you're not opening with the race? <laughs> And reader, I just started laughing so hard. And he's he's like looking at me and he's like, the way you described it, it sounded so great. I'm thinking it's awesome. You start out with the race. It's exciting. It's interesting. Then she's won the race and the person comes and gives her the gossip. He's like, but you didn't start with the actual race. <laughs> it, was, um, it was a latte snorting moment. And I'll do a little bit of um, Santa Fe plugging. We went to Cliff Foodies, which is one of my favorite places in Santa Fe. And oh, I'm feeling a little sneezy. Cliff Foodie sneezy. Uh, <laughs> and we, oh, one of the, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. One of the reasons I love Cliff Foodies uh, is that they have um, the latte bowl. It's basically a cereal bowl. I'll put the picture on the show notes. Um, and I love it because I can sit there and hold my bowl of latte. So it was just fortunate that I, at this point I had very little left in my bowl of latte or I might have snorted it all over the table. Um, people, I was laughing hard enough that people at nearby tables were glancing over at us. <laughs> so, reader, I am... I started writing that opening scene yesterday. I'm going to rewrite the beginning. I think I know enough about the world building now to um, to be able to rework uh, the beginning enough. I think what I'm going to do, and Agent Sarah doesn't know this yet, so don't tell her. She used to listen to my podcast. I don't think she does anymore. Hi, Sarah, <laughs> if you are listening. I think what I'm going to do is get this story as far as I can before Christmas, give it to people to read over Christmas and maybe read work a little bit and then send what I have to Sarah, which she's not going to like because she probably wants the whole book, but then I'm going to take the intervening time to write Rogue Familiar because I was looking at the income you know, here's our author finance portion of the podcast, you know, and my backlist generates a decent income, um, but it's not enough to meet monthly expenses if I don't have a release within a certain cycle. And, you know, doing the, the long night of the radiant star and the re-release -re of five golden rings bumps things a little bit but nothing like having a new novel release. Uh, so I really, really need to release Rogue Familiar in February. I'm starting to work on the cover with Fabulous Robin, the cover designer. And so I think I'm going to set Bandits aside and finish out Rogue Familiar and let Sarah read it and then get her feedback and finish that. So... So we shall see. I'm getting a little stacked up. Um, I would really love, <laughs> I know I keep saying this, I would really love to pick up my productivity again. Um, I think I have just had, I don't know. I, I'm not sure what the problem is. I, I need to do some things to improve my concentration again. I think I get complacent after a while and I you know, do things where, you know, I think, oh, uh, it doesn't matter if I look at this or that. I don't have to do um, all of these things to clear my mind. And then once my mind starts to get, my concentration starts to go, I really have to deliberately rebuild it. 
So long time listeners will probably recognize this cycle in me. I feel like I've had a lot on my mind since August, probably. And, you know, just a lot of things going on. Um, and I, I need to, um, I need to climb back on my pillow, right? Uh, long time listeners will recognize that metaphor. I'll recap for new ones, just in case there's some new folks out there, uh, which goes back to the idea of doing yoga and that, um, the martial artists have this quip where they say, oh, well, yoga is great, but what happens if someone knocks you off your pillow? The idea being that you need to be able to fight to keep people from knocking you off your pillow where you're just sort of sitting there all placidly. Um, it's a very snarky thing for the martial artists to say deliberately. So, right. So anyway, that's more of the Taoist perspective. Um, I w one of the gals who was with us in Kauai is a Buddhist practicing Buddhist. And, uh, I told her that, and she said that she doesn't talk about it often when I mentioned it to her because I said, well, that our mutual friend had told me that she was because he thought that I would be interested since I'm a Taoist. And she said, you know, I don't think I've ever met a practicing Taoist before. And I said, yeah, you know, there aren't many of us. And, you know, it's not like there's a church or um, any kind of organization. It's sort of like the Society of Anarchists, that cartoon where, you know, like the whole empty room. Uh, you know, the Taoists, the ones who practice, practice pretty quietly, I think. I'm probably because I yak on about it on a podcast, I'm probably one of the more vocal ones. Um, and I had a point there. Well, anyway, that, that is part of, of the Tao is, you know, keeping to the middle path. Um, you know, when you get, you don't try, you don't worry about the fact that sometimes you get knocked off your path or off your pillow so much as you concentrate on trying to get back into that flow. And I'm feeling like I, I need to find that flow again. Um, get some of these things done. Uh, there's a few things that are up in the air. A uh, couple people in my life dealing with some unusual health issues, which is just, it just feels like there's a lot of that going on. I, I mentioned that yesterday. Um, I don't know if it's just fallout of pandemic or what. Um, close out of the year. Uh, the, you know, sort of the enduring cycle of, of disease lately which is probably continuation of the pandemic. But um, I don't, I think I mentioned yesterday, one of my friends, um, her entire school district has closed because of the RSV going around and all the kids sick with that. Uh, I asked Jim about that yesterday and he said, no, that the Albuquerque schools were still open, but that they were, they had the infrastructure to go to remote learning easily. So, which I know is hard on the parents. Uh, I have another friend who was checking in with me and said, I, I know you're going through hard things right now, um, harder than they were, but they have young kids. And I was like, you know, the chaos of having young kids is, you know, it really is hard to keep an even keel in your life when you have that. So everybody has their things, right? One of the things I'm dealing with right now is, uh, along the lines of health issues is that my, uh, my senior queen cat, Isabel, the beautiful Isabel is, um, she is getting really frail and she may be failing. Uh, she's 17. So she's had a very good life. She mostly sleeps these days. Um, uh, but yeah, despite my best efforts, she is losing weight and she's not doing well. So, you know, you know how that is. It's hard. Uh, so we, yesterday, I started looking at kittens um, because I do believe that the best remedy for um, dealing with grief and death is to have new life in the house. So I've located um, two Maine Coon kittens at a breeder in Albuquerque. And I think we're going to go see them on Sunday afternoon. 
So that's kind of exciting, isn't it? I think we would pick them back, pick them up on our way back from Tucson uh, at Christmas time in just a few weeks. They were born on August 20th, which seems neat because it's like two days before my birthday. So now we have to decide, do we want the girl kitten? Do we want the boy kitten? Do we want both kittens? I don't know. I've never had more than two cats at a time. Uh, if we get the if we get both kittens, we would have four cats at once because, you know, Isabel may rally. She may do okay. Um, and then our other cat, Jackson, is 10. So uh, I'm trying to decide if he will feel teamed up on if there's two kittens that are siblings or if that will be fun for him. It would be better to have one. Uh, send me your cat theories, any of you who are cat lovers. Uh, I have had cats my whole life, so... I think um, I'm usually the one people come to for cat advice. And were I asked this advice, I would probably say it would be better to get just one kitten. But I'm very tempted to get both. We shall see. Um, my other thing for this weekend, largely tomorrow, is I'm going to try to get the Christmas decorating done. Um, I have decided that I'm going to do it, that I will be happy to do it. Also. Isabel loves to lie under the Christmas tree, so um, I want her to have her, her last Christmas tree, especially since she mostly sleeps all the time these days. So, and, and I got those cool lights, right? They're here stacked up on the floor beside me. Uh, I showed some of you, I don't know, early in the week. I want to put the cool lights on the tree. I might do simpler decorations this year, but I'm going to try to get those all done tomorrow, um, get my business stuff done Sunday morning. Go look at kittens Sunday afternoon. That sounds like a pretty good weekend, huh? And I'm hoping for good concentration on the book today. Um, of course, if I'm going to be editing, I won't be producing Massive Word Count, but I haven't been producing Massive Word Count anyway, so. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure how much I can get done before Christmas, but. I'm thinking I might go faster on Rogue Familiar and it might be good to set this aside and let it stew. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. So, um, yeah, so that's where I'm at. Hope you all are doing well with uh, the season. Uh, I saw somebody say on the internet yesterday that their therapist says to them, have a gentle holiday which I thought was kind of funny when I was talking about that whole being gentle with yourself earlier in the week um, because the therapist feels like saying have a happy holiday or happy holidays is putting too much pressure on since holidays are difficult for many people. So have a gentle holiday. <laughs> I just think it's funny that gentle is the word of late. Uh, surely the universe is telling me something, right? On that note, I hope you all have a happy or gentle weekend, as you prefer, and I will talk to you all on Monday. You all take care. Bye-bye.